Hi, I'm John Peng from Uber's developer platform. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how we improve the Git status performance in Uber's Go Monorepo. So first, a big background. Uber's Go Monorepo is a single Git repository that hosts almost all Go code in Uber. And because we want to limit the size of the Git repository, we do not check in generated code and third-party libraries. But still, we have over 500,000 files in Git index, uh, um, and it's growing. Because of the size of the uh, repository, we, uh, the P95 Git status latency we have in um, Go One repo is over 20 seconds on Mac and about three seconds on Linux. Just imagine you type Git status, it takes 20 seconds to return. Why Git status so slow? We found that Git setters spend most of the time in doing two things. One is preloading index, where Git setters um, calls L stats on each file. And the second part is collecting untracked files, and for, in which it calls reader for each directory. And because of that, Git setters grow linearly as the number of files grows in the repository. And we also found that on Linux and Mac, they, um, these costs, the number of costs are very similar. The reason why Git status runs faster on Linux than Mac is simply because these two costs are faster on Linux. So in order for Git status to, grow, to scale as the number of files grow in the repository, we have to break this linear re, uh, relationship. There are two optimizations that we can do. One is to collect file changes uh, incrementally instead of like, uh, traversing all the files at once. We can uh, use a FS monitor to do, do the uh, file collect file changes. And the second part is to skip all the uh, directories that are not changed since last time Git status was run. And this can be done by caching the end time for all the directories. The second optimization can be done by simply flipping a Git config configuration. So I'm going to focus on file system monitor next. The first file system monitor we try is the Watchman. We found that after enabling Watchman, uh, we greatly improved the medium latency on Git status. However, the P95 latency doesn't improve that much because Watchman ne needs a very significant warm up uh, to like, collect all the, st uh, the, the status of files. On the other hand, on Linux, there's no much improvement on either uh, uh, P95 or medium. In fact, it makes P95 even worse. Starting Git version 2.36.1, we have a built-in FS monitor daemon available. So our, our metrics show that after enabling that Git FS monitor daemon, the P95 latency becomes 7.5, uh, 7.7 seconds on macOS. However, this, um, this FS monitor is only available on macOS and Windows, so we didn't try on Linux. After rolling out the FS monitor daemon on our developer MacBooks, we can show that starting um, early June, the weekly P95 of Git status quickly dropped. But then the question is, what about Linux? And um, since 7.7 .7 seconds of macOS is still not great, can we make it even better? Um, so that will have to go back to the linear relationship that uh, we talk about. So because of the Git status latency grow linearly with the number of files, what if we can reduce the files in the, in the workspace? And that's the idea uh, behind Git's bus checkout. So in a large repository like Uber's Goldman repo, we found that most developers only work on a handful of projects. And most of the microservices and libraries that we have in Uber's Goldman repo only depend on a small portion of the repository. So a, a simple approach is to only check out source full if you only work on the project full. But it gets more complicated than that. What if Foo depends on another library called bar. And what if bar depends on other libraries? And what if the dependency of other libraries changes? And the build, will, the build graph will be broken, and you won't be able to build. Fortunately, we use Bazel as the build system. 
And Bazel requires that every package has to explicitly depend, uh, declare their dependencies. So that gives an, give us an idea. We can use Bazel query to discover all the dependency, the transitive dependencies of a project, and check all the, um, the dependency closure into git splash checkout. But then the question is, what to run the query? Um, because we need to run Bazel query to discover dependency, and before running that query, the spot checkout may not have a, a full dependency graph in it. So if we run Bazel query in spot checkout, Bazel will break because many of files, are, many build files are missing. And the other problem we have is different workspaces may have different revision checkout there, and different revision may have different dependency graph. So we cannot just run Bazel query in an arbitrary workspace. So what can you do? To solve the first problem, we use a feature of Git called Git Worktree. Worktree allows us to check out multiple workspaces out of the same repo without having to clone the repo several times. And so in order to, um, to use that, we can have one fully checkout Worktree and a sparse Worktree. And then we can run the Bazel query in the uh, full Worktree copy and to discover all the, the um, files that are needed by a project, and then use the result to check out um, those files in the sparse work tree. But in order to, for um, that Bezo to return the, the accurate result, we need to make sure that the full tree has exactly the same graph as the sparse uh, checkout. So by, in order to do that, we have to check out the same revision in the full tree and then copy all the uncommitted changes from the sparse work tree into the work tree. But after doing that, the previous state of that work tree is already gone. And what if user have some important changes in that uh, work tree? So in order to avoid uh, erasing all user changes, we make the work tree private. So we discourage people to make changes, and then we can mutate the, the state of the work tree at any time. So piecing all together, um, we, this is the typical workflow that um, we can use, use the sparse checkout. First, we use um, a command called git bzl new to create a sparse checkout. And then we can call git bzl add to add the existing project to the sparse checkout. And under the hood, git bzl will run the basic query in the full um, work tree and then check out all the necessary files there. After that, people can um, check out a new branch, edit files, run tests, commit, do whatever they need to develop their code. And at some point, they have to sync with uh, the main branch by calling something like git pull origin main. But uh, as between the last time they check out the, uh, the, the spot checkout and the time that they uh, run git pull origin main, so, some login library that they are depending on may have a new dependency, and then at, after they pull from main, the build may be broken. So they have to run git bzl refresh to make sure that all the necessary files are checked out in the, in the um, sparse work tree again. And at, at, at the end, they can run tests again and then possibly uh, create a pull request. So after deploying sparse checkout, it, we can see that it greatly improved the Git status performance on both Linux and Mac. And the P95 on both um, systems are close to one second or sometimes even less. And this also summarizes all the optimization that we have done on um, Uber's Go Mono repo. In the future, we can um, deploy a Bazel query services that, that run, running online so that we don't need to maintain a full tree on every laptop. And we are also thinking about deploying partial clones, so the git clone and git pull will be faster. I can take some questions. Thank you, really interesting work. Uh, one thing that I know is in Git recently that might be interesting to you is the sparse index. Have you explored that at all now that you're using sparse checkout? Yeah, it's some, something that we definitely want to explore. Um, right now, we, uh, 
we, we are more focusing on index the, to um, profile the difference between sparse checkout versus full checkout, but is the sparse index can be deployed by uh, integrating into our Git, um, the Git BZR tool that's internally manage the whole um, Git repository. Yes, is there really something that in our radar? Out of curiosity, how did you capture this, uh, the statistics of P95 out of the git status command? Yeah, good question. So in Uber, we have uh, something called local developer analytics. Um, so we have uh, a git wrapper that is uh, that's sending developer metrics to our, um, our servers. And then we know the, we collect almost every git command, uh, the, the, la the latency, the version or even the username of, of the people of the their laptop. Yeah, so we ha we get all those data. So that it allow us to try all different configuration and see how it affects the performance of developer experience, uh, developer laptops in a large scale. So every time like like we before we deploy the the gear FS monitor and um, and the watchman, we actually draw out to a small number of developers and then grow, uh, and start to see how they, they are comparing to the rest of the population. And that give us a very, uh, in a data-driven decision making. Uh, I guess it's a little bit off topic, but you mentioned that you're gathering metrics using this wrapper around Git. Uh, have you looked into using the Git's trace2 library to, to gather metrics from traces that way? Is there something, like, did it not meet your needs in some way? Is there a reason that you're using a wrapper instead? Um, yeah, I, we, we didn't explore that way. Um, it's been probably something that's um, explored before, but it's, it's uh, already deployed in Uber that we, we just use without much uh, thinking about before working on this project. But yeah, good idea. I can take the feedback to the uh, developers. Right. One question. All right. um, so you mentioned uh, this is depending on sparse checkouts. Uh, for different users, you could have different sparse checkouts. So do you have any tooling around uh, helping the users manage what, what is in their sparse checkout and what they don't have checked out? Um, I think the main tool that we, we use to manage sparse checkout is just uh, the GPZL uh, tool, command line. And um, almost everything that need to interact with spot check are incorporating that tool. But otherwise, they are free to use the re the regular Git command to like take make branch tool whatever. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much.